to the Sports Authority, everyone. I'm Tara Packmeyer, and we've got all your NFL scores and fantasy stats on the ticker at the bottom of the screen. Stay up with us tonight. TJ Hushman Zada's in studio for a chat. Plus, voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson, sits down with the Who Asked You crew to discuss the Bengals' big win over the Panthers. Now, while some of the blame for the recent offensive struggles is landing on Johnson & Johnson, Chad and Rudy's production is directly related to the reorganized line. Today against the rejuvenated Panthers, Eric Geichek's back at center with Andrew Whitworth, replacing Levi Jones at left tackle. The Bengals can't afford to lose another offensive lineman to injury or lose a third straight regular season game. That's something they haven't done since 2004. Both teams trade punts on the first two possessions. The Bengals stopping the Panthers early courtesy of the perfectly timed Ahmed Brooks sack. But it's the Panthers that strike first using their usual suspect. Jake Delhomme 19 yards to Steve Smith with Tory James covering. Carolina has yet to lose a game this season with Chad Johnson's former junior college teammate on the field. The Smith pickup sets up the Delhomme short pass up the middle to Chris Mangum. Medea Williams and Landon Johnson appear to drop Mangum short of the goal line. But after a challenge, the 7-yard score stands, giving the Panthers the 7-0 lead with a couple minutes left in the first. Meanwhile, Cincinnati held without a first down its first four possessions. Panthers tackle Chris Jenkins beats Eric Geichek to drop Rudy for a 3-yard loss. 17 total offensive yards minus one rushing for the Bengals in the first. Second quarter, different story. The Bengals convert on third down twice. The first first down coming on a third and 11 pass to Chris Perry, the tailback playing for the first time this season. The Bengals' mojo almost interrupted on the Carolina 19. Palmer's pass intended for tight end Reggie Kelly should have been picked off by Ken Lucas there. That was his for the taking. Carson doesn't miss Kelly a second time, though, capping off the 13-play 80-yard drive with a 7-yard tee. Kelly splits the safeties to tie the game 7-all, his fifth TD in 111 career games. The Panthers answer, ensuing possession, needing just 2 minutes, 29 seconds to do so. DeLome to Nick Goings, past Delta O'Neill and Caleb Miller, 14-7 Panthers at the break. Third quarter, a Rudy 21-yard run gets the Bengals to the Panthers 11, but a 2-yard loss on third down forces the field goal, but at least it produces a score. Shane Graham Golden on the 23-yard try. Bengals trail 14-10 after 3. Play of the game, Bengals facing fourth and one on the Panthers 35. Instead of punting the ball away, offensive coordinator Bob Bratkowski makes the gutsy call that Chad Johnson answers, pulling down the 32-yard catch on the sideline with Chris Gamble all over him. And that play sets up this one. Palmer, one yard toss to TJ Hushmanzada, who beats Gamble underneath for the lead. 17-14 Cincinnati. Palmer, eight of nine for 93 yards in the go-ahead drive. Next possession, another fourth and one, but with 5.14 to go, Marvin Lewis elects to play for field position and punts. Panthers nearly make him pay. Two straight Smith completions net 41 yards. Panthers in the red zone, where they were a perfect 12 for 12 scoring this season. Kevin Case Vaharn tarnishes that stat. Delhomme looking for Keyshawn Johnson. Case Vaharn out of nowhere in the end zone picks him off. The only turnover of the game with about four minutes left. Panthers, in theory, have another shot late, but Robert Gathers doesn't let him take it, dropping DeLome for the Bengals' third sack of the game. Nothing could be finer than beating Carolina for the first time ever. 17-14, to 14, your final. Smith finishes with eight catches for 126 yards, but CJ gets the win along with his six-catch, 73-yard performance. He has yet to haul in more than six receptions in a game this season. Palmer 23 of 39 for 240 yards, two touchdowns, and Rudy runs for 101 yards, his second game over the century mark this season. The Bengals are now 14 and 0 when he reaches the 25 carry mark. The run game solid today, 112 net yards on the ground for the Bengals, almost doubling the Panthers 60, but it's nearly doubling Carolina on third down efficiency percentage 38 to 18. That's getting all the attention inside the locker room. I thought the difference in the football game today seemed to be our third down on both sides of the football, which is a big difference. We were behind in field position early in the game, and we were able to catch up a little bit in the third quarter, and that made a big difference. I knew in my mind, I'm like, all right, yeah, they're driving on us, but it only takes one play to end the game, and, and let's go out and try and find a way to do that, and we were able to do it. it it's huge, especially the explosive guys they've got. Keyshawn's been playing good this year. Uh, you know, Steve Smith, you, you saw what he could do out there, so... I mean, it was a heck of a challenge that everybody stood up for. Well, I'm not going to say we you know, must, must win our season would have been over, but I think to get back on track. You know, I think we slid for a minute, but I think, it's, I think it's, it was more important to get back on track and get back to the, thing, the way we do things. You would think we were pounding with Rudy. The defense thinks we're going to pound it where they stack everybody in the box. And, you know, uh, to have that trust in us, TJ and I, not just me, but just TJ also, you know, to be able to call up like that, it says a lot. 
And the guys got it done. It's time for you at home to get it done and make the call. Which was the most critical element in today's win? The offensive line work allowing just two sacks and paving the way for Rudy's 100 yard day. The coaches adjustments after a tough first quarter dominating the second half. The run defense giving up a paltry 60 yards or third down defense two for 11 and over in the second half. Call 345-1212 to vote results later in the show. And we are joined now a little who asked you, John Jackson, Richard Skinner. Gentlemen, how big is this? Because I, I actually said this to a couple of players in the locker room. I said, wow, this is a huge win. This is a, a game that you can go one way or the other as a football team. I got the response from players. It's not quite that big. It's too early in the season for that big a game. Well, I disagree with that. Just because the way you've been playing, and granted the Tampa Bay game should have probably been a win, um, but if you'd have lost this game at 3-3 three and three with what's ahead on the schedule, I think you were done. I think this was a huge win, not just to get one in the left-hand column, but also from a psyche perspective. Do players not look at it like that when you're, when you're six games into the season? Well, I think they do, but I think they were almost relieved that they, they won this game. Um, they've, they've got to look at this as a big win because, um, one, they haven't really been playing bad the last two weeks. And last week, I thought they should have won the game, but they lost it in the fourth quarter. And this week... They win the game in the fourth quarter by there, doing the right thing. There is plenty of praise to go around, but I, I'm going to let you hand out your gold medal. Where does it go first? Oh, well, that's a tough one. You know what? I'll go to Bob Ratkowski and Marvin Lewis because obviously they had done something in scouting that said on fourth and one, they're going to give us this look. We're going to run this play at this particular time. And they knew exactly what they wanted to do. There was no hemming and hawing. It was let's go for it. And instead of running the football, they ran the pass play. So let's give credit to those guys, especially Brat, because he's taken a lot of heat the last week or so. Defense stands up here. Do you want to go some other way as to what your significant thing is to win this? No, I'll go with the defense. I mean, what they, um, the biggest thing they set up to do was take them out of their, their, out of their game as far as the rhythm, and they did that. They, um, they put some pressure on them, and especially the, the sack on, on the last series. That was big. Well, we have talked about how this team can't shut down the running game, and Deshaun Foster could go absolutely nowhere. This was a defense that consistently got them off the right. field. Uh, and I have to look at the stats specifically. It was 60 yards. They shut them down 60 yards. And that's I don't big. believe they converted a third down in, in the, the second half. Not in the, half, se not the, second, not the half. second half. They, they were 0 in the second half um, and, and had a chance. The, the biggest third down conversion was the one where DeLome gets intercepted in the end zone. They had a great chance to not only convert the third down, but score a touchdown in case Farn comes up with the pick. Okay, if we worry about the offensive line, uh, give me grades on uh, on Whitworth and Geichek. I'd say they did C plus. C plus is all you're giving. No. Wow, you're tough today. No, I'm not tough. I think they can get a lot better, and they have to get a lot better, especially with the teams that are coming up. And Whitworth takes on Peppers, Jenkins, so on, so forth. As does Geichek. As right. these guys do a lot of stunting today. Are you any more than pressed in the C plus? Uh, no, because if you'd have gotten an A, you'd have scored 35 points, right? I mean, I guarantee when the grades are handed out, they probably won't get more than the C plus. Especially Geichek, he struggled again. And, and to his credit, though, he bucked up. And over the last two and a half quarters, he was part of an offensive line that got Rudy some running room, got Carson a little more time. So he deserves the credit for that. But boy, that first quarter and a half. He looked like he looked like a 150-pound high schooler playing center. This team has really stepped up to what we talked about before the season and how deep this team was going to be. We talk about Geichek, we talk about Whitworth, but, uh, but on defense, we talk about Ahmad Brooks, our third-round supplemental pick that was roundly criticized because they brought him in. Mm -hmm. He plays once again as a starter for Brian Simmons. And Dexter Jackson has had to step out, gets back on the field today, but the star of the game ends up being Kevin Casebaharn, who has stepped in. Um, yeah. How deep is this team? How good are second teamers, quote unquote, second teamers, now starters? Well, I think they are good, but you, if you had your choice, you'd rather have those starters in there. I mean, due to injuries, they've had to play the, the musical chair round. And this team, un, unlike last year, they've got, a, they've got that injury bug. They didn't do that last year. I mean, a lot of guys were healthy. This year, they're going through that injury bug, and they've got to, you know, man up. And Marvin pointed out, I mean, they got Brian Simmons some snaps. Dexter got some snaps. It was good to get those guys back on the field. Marvin made a point. Those are our two most vocal guys. And just to have them back out there was a bit of a lift. So, yeah, I mean, I think it does show that you have probably funny part is way more depth on defense than maybe you have on offense. We don't get to criticize Carson Palmer a lot because he's so good. Is there something wrong with Carson Palmer? Because we talked about it a little bit through the game today. He doesn't look like he has exactly what he had. I I've got one criticism. Get rid of the glove. <laughs> um, Ben today's, throws with the glove. Today's those passes, they were off. I mean, I've seen him throw a lot better passes than today. And he had that glove on. And I talked to somebody earlier, and they said he had the glove on all week. He needs to get rid of that glove. Yeah, it was interesting. On, on the TV broadcast, Brian, while I did listen to you, I also listened to some of the TV. <laughs> I did. I listened to both. <laughs> but on the TV broadcast, they made a point that said, 
he, you know, he thinks he's only 90%. Now, I haven't heard Carson talk in that terms yeah. before of being 90%, not just with me, but with his mechanics, with his timing, with his rhythm. So even he's talking now in terms of not fully being there. And you can see that. I mean, it's not hard to see. A healthy Chris Perry is going to make a difference in this offense, isn't he? Huge. Yeah. It's going to make Huge. a big difference because if you give him those touches, you know, the dimension of the game changes because now you've got to worry about another receiver All and right. a running back. Very quick. 41-38 uh, winners. Falcons over to the Steelers. Do the Bengals beat the Falcons? I think they do. Two one-dimensional and they give up too many points. I think they beat them because they, the defense is going to build on this win and go from there. If you want to be a championship team, you've got to have a good defense. All right, gentlemen, thanks very much. We'll send it back to you, Tara. In the call, now here are your results. Which was the most crit critical element in today's win? 48% go with the offensive line work, and another 36 give props to the coaching staff, thanks to the hundreds that phoned in and voted this evening.